All right, guys, so welcome back to a brand new ReactJS tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and talk about the use effect hook. So I actually did cover this in my two hour uh, React course, but I figured I would make a dedicated video, a nice, short, detailed video talking about use effect and how we can actually use use effect. OK, so what exactly is the use effect hook? So Pretty much, if you actually go to the React documentation, it will tell you that the effect hook lets you perform side effects in function components. So what do you mean by side effects? So side effects being, for example, invoking some kind of API, or maybe you need to read something from a file, or maybe you need to basically do some task outside of the React app. Okay, and it will affect the actual application. So that's why they call it a side effect. So things that happen indirectly. So the most common scenario would be having to invoke some kind of API, right? So whenever you want to invoke an API, ideally you'd want to use the use effect hook, okay? So the use effect hook has two parameters. It has a callback function that you're going to pass in as the first parameter. And then it has a second parameter, which is the dependency array. And we're going to talk about both of those things when we look at an example. So before we actually get into use effect, Let's just say in this scenario, right? Let's say you want to fetch some kind of data from an API. Now, let me actually open up uh, Malkun. So this is going to actually allow me to uh, create a fake API so I can actually use it for this demonstration. So I have uh, this program over here. It's called Malkun. You can download it. It's free. It's open source. I think it's open source. Yeah, it is open source. And it pretty much allows you to create a fake API so you can use for development. So I'm just going to hit it start server and it's running on port 4001 and we're going to return an array of users okay so the goal is i want to fetch this api i want to get all of the users and i want to render it to uh, the, the document so let's go ahead let's 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 try to see what happens when we try to uh, perform this action without using the use effect hook so let's go and create a new component so i'll create a users component users or let's just call it user.jsx actually i'll just call it users because it's multiple users okay so let's say this is some kind of web page this is some I'm, I'm sorry not a web page let's say this is some kind of a route okay and it's going to render to this component so first let's uh, import react from react and let's go ahead and export our component so export const users it's going to be an arrow component or I'm sorry, an arrow function. And we're going to go ahead and just return a div. Okay. Let's just say users and let me go ahead and just import this from the components uh, folder. So it's going to be rendered in the DOM right now. You can see it says users and we zoom in a little bit. Perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to fetch without using, try to fetch our API without using use effect. So let's go ahead and create a function. Let's just call it a fetch users. Okay, nothing, nothing really complicated. This is going to be a wrapper around the fetch API. So we're gonna go ahead and pass in the URL. So this could be any URL, but for me, it's going to be localhost port 4001 slash API slash users. That is where uh, the user's resource lives, okay? And we're going to go ahead and handle the uh, the promise. So fetch the fetch API. And keep in mind that this is actually built into the browser. So you don't need to install anything. Okay. You can use Axios. You can use whatever HTTP client you want. So for fetch, when we resolve the promise, it's going to give us the actual response object. So in order to get the JSON object, we need to actually call res.json. Res.json. And this also returns a promise, so you have to resolve that promise. Okay, so we're pretty much going to do a promise chain. That's what it's called. So we're basically returning a promise and in order to resolve this promise that's being returned in this callback function of the first dot then, we just call dot then again. Okay, so that's called promise chaining. So let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're gonna console log val. And let's also make sure we handle any errors. Okay, so if any errors happen. So if there's an error that happens when we resolve the fetch call, it'll be caught down here. 
okay? And then if there's any errors that happen when we try to uh, get the JSON response, it's going to be called down here, okay? So now that we have the function, let's go ahead and let's let's call it. Whoops, one second. Okay, so let's go ahead and call the function. So keep in mind that it's going to call fetch users when the users component is rendered, okay? So let's go ahead and do that and let's see what happens. So we can see that, yes, it's calling the API. Okay, so we're able to actually call the API. Now this is obviously, you know, nothing crazy is going on, we're just calling the API, but the problem here is that how do we actually render the result to the DOM, right? How do we actually get the result from inside this dot then inside this callback function and how do we actually render it to the dom well there's no way that we can actually render it to uh the document if it's living inside this callback function over here so what we do what, what you typically do is when you fetch data you want to update kind of state some kind of state variable okay remember what exactly state means it's basically going to allow us to control the behavior control what is being seen on the actual component and there's a lot of other things too as well as keeping track of the actual state of the component okay so what we want is we want to have a state variable that represents all the users that were fetched from the api okay so what we're going to do is we're going to create a state variable called users and the setter function we're going to call it set users okay now again you can call this whatever you want you can call this update users if you want to but ideally most of the time people just go with the set users okay so that's just the convenient part. So you can import the use state function, or you can just call it from react.useState. Both, both way works. And we're going to pass in an initial state, which is going to be an empty array, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and render this, uh, this the, whatever's inside users right now. So to do that, we're going to need to transform the array into JSX elements. Okay, so if you were to want to dynamically render all these things, you would call users.map, whoops. And then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, let me just change this to value, okay? And now each user is going to have a username. Okay, that's that's at least how we have our uh, structure, our, our user structured, okay? But again, you can have literally any kind of value, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and let's just do a p tag. Let's just say user name is going to be user dot username. Okay. So right now, nothing is going to be shown in the DOM. Okay, because this is an empty, this is an empty array. Okay. But once we actually populate users, then it will work. So now let's actually see what happens when we call set users. Right. We want to update users what, as soon as we get the new data. And that new data is this val, this val parameter. So we're gonna go ahead and call set users and we're gonna pass in val. Now let's save and let's see what's happening. Okay, so you can see that when I refresh, you can see that all of our users are being displayed in the DOM, but you also see something else happening. You can see that we have uh, a ton of console logs on line 10. And the reason why this is happening is because fetch users is actually being called an infinite amount of times. And you're probably wondering, well, why exactly is that happening? How can we prevent that? Well, first of all, let's understand why exactly it is calling infinite amount of times, okay? So let me go ahead and actually just delete this part real quick. Okay, uh, let's just refresh. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here's what exactly happens, okay? So when the component renders, it's going to call fetch users. Okay, it's gonna call it for the first time. Once fetch users is called, it's going to call the fetch function and it's going to uh, get all of our data from the remote source, okay? So assuming that nothing fails and everything is doing fine, okay? Because if, if something failed, uh, we would just go straight to this catch over here. But let's say if everything goes well, what happens is we console log val, which is the actual data from the API, and then we call set users, okay? So what exactly happens when we call set users? Okay, when we call set users, what happens is it's going to update the state variable called users. Okay, now keep in mind that whenever you update state, it's going to it's going to re-render the entire component. So when we call set users, it updates users, and then it's going to re-render the component. Well, when the component is re-rendered, 
fetch users is called again. Because remember, we have this call happening every single time users is being re-rendered. Okay? So since fetch users is called, it's going to go through this whole thing again, and it's going to update the state. And it's going to call fetch users again because another re-render happens. And it's going to keep doing it over and over and over again. So that's a reason why you need to use the use effect hook to perform side effects. Because what can happen is if when you update state, okay, without using use effect hook, it can cause problems like this where you have an infinite loop. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and use the use effect hook. So let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and reference React. And we can call it just call use effect. Now again, you can also import the use effect hook directly from the React library, but this way also works too. So remember earlier I said that use, use effect takes in two parameters, it takes in the callback function. So that's the effect function. That's the effect that we want to perform. And it takes in a second parameter, which we're going to omit for now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and call fetch users, okay? So let's go ahead and actually instead of having this function, I'm just going to go ahead and just put that inside here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens. So right now we are using the use effect hook. And like I said, you definitely want to make sure you're performing your side effects inside the callback function of use effect. So what we're doing that right now is good. But let's see what happens. Okay, so if I refresh the page, you can see that we're still getting the data. It's still calling the API, but it doesn't fix the issue with the infinite loop. Okay, now if I get rid of set users, you'll see that it'll call it once. Okay, we have the data in the console, but we haven't updated the state. Now, why is it that it's still infinite looping? Now, here's where you need to understand use effect. Okay, so the use effect hook is always going to run on every single render by default. Okay, now here's where the magic happens when you pass in the second parameter that I was mentioning a couple times, the dependency array. Okay, so the second parameter, this dependency array. So the significance of this dependency array is basically we can pass in state variables. Okay, so for example, if we have a user state variable, we can pass it into this array. And what that does is it says, okay, we are only going to perform this effect only if users has actually been updated. Okay, if the state of users has been updated. Now remember, user effect is always going to be called once on every single render. Now, when you pass in a dependency array, an empty one, it's going to basically say, okay, let's run use effect once, but then we're not going to run it anymore because we don't have any other state variables that we're depending on in order to invoke the use effect hook again. So what happens here is that this actually fixes the infinite loop that we're getting. Okay, you can see that we have no more infinite, uh, infinite calls to the API. And that's because we specified an empty dependency. Array. There's no variable, there's no state variable that we are depending on. So we're only going to invoke this one time only. Now what happens if we pass in users into this array? And you'll see that it's now going to go ahead and call the API over and over and over again. So the same that it happened when we had not used use effect and when we also didn't have the dependency array. Now why exactly is this happening when we pass in users? Well think about it. Well when we run use effect for the first time it's going to update the state variable users because we call set users. And then what happens is since we are since users was updated and that's part of the dependency array, it's going to cause use effect to run again. And it's going to keep on doing that over and over and over again. So the right solution is to have users not in the dependency array. And I'm going to show you one more thing and then we're going to call it uh, a video. We're going to we're going to end the video. So let's go ahead and create some kind of state variable. Let's say you want to fetch a uh, new data. Okay, let's say you have you know some outdated data and you want to fetch it again. So we can actually create a state variable called fetch set fetch. Actually, let me call this uh fetching set fetching. And this is just going to be a boolean variable. So and we'll set it to false. Okay, the the value of this doesn't really matter. What 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 matters the most is that we're going to use this. Uh, this is just going to be some kind of binary value. So it's going to be either true or false. The point is that we want this value to change. So that way it can cause use effect to be invoked. Now, obviously right now it's not going to do anything because fetching has not been updated yet. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a button and let's just say fetch, okay? And when we click on this button, what we're gonna do is we're going to basically update the value of set fetching. And since 
I'm sorry, we're gonna update the value of fetching by calling set. So we're gonna update it from false to true or true to false. And since fetching is gonna be updated, and since that's part of the dependency array, fetch is gonna be, uh, the, the user fetch callback function is going to be invoked. Okay, and it's gonna update the state. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's do on click. We're gonna call set fetching. And we'll just pass in the value, the negated value of fetching. So every single time it will invoke the opposite value, updating the actual state. Okay. So now let's refresh. And if I click on fetch, you'll see that it's being logged in the console. And every single time I click fetch, it's going to, it's going to log in the console. Now let me go ahead into Makun and let's add a couple of uh, more fields. So let's say, you know, something may have happened in the database where some other API um, is, you know, some of the API uh, shares the same database and new values are populated in the database and you want to get new data. So if I call this button, you'll see that now I just fetched new data. Okay, so this is a way that you can, this is, a, this is the advantages that you can use when it comes to using the use effect. So hopefully all of this makes sense. And I really hope, uh, you know, this, uh, this helps you guys understand how to actually use the use effect hook and how to actually properly use it. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, feel free to leave a like and comment down below if you guys have any questions. And um, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.